Dennis, we're live. Take it away. Macho man. <laughs> okay. Well, folks, welcome to another Watch Grabs with me. I'm Cutter, joined as always by Jonathan and Foxy, and a very, very special guest today, the one, the only master of the fish hook. It's Justy. Thank you for coming along today, Justy. How are you? Yeah, Grant. Let's get on with it. <laughs> That's the spirit. That's the energy you've been waiting for. There That's you have it. it. Yes. He's got it, man. He's got it. <laughs> we, we, I'm good. I'm good. How are we, you guys? How's, how's great. everyone? Great. We had Jamie Coleman on our last episode. It was very similar energy, which was, yeah. let's get this fucking done now. <laughs> oh, man, I can only imagine what Jamie will be like. <laughs> I lived with Jamie for a couple of years, and uh, Cantankerous is a generous way of describing his... Uh, yeah. He has absolutely no... Um, he's no tolerance for nonsense at all. Nope. Not at all, but you know what? That's why he picked Goldberg as his topic and we were out of there in an hour. It was, <laughs> we just fucking flew through it. <laughs> Goldberg? Yeah. Yeah, Goldberg. Right. Oh, okay. And speaking of topics, Justy has chosen um, a really great topic that actually we've, we've mentioned probably in every single topic that we've done so far and the importance mm. of it. But we haven't done a full episode on it yet, so... Really excited about this one. It is the best sellers in the biz, um, which I mean, we always say like how how important it is and how uh, how great it is to see certain guys doing it and all that. Um, so we have some great ones. What led you to kind of go with that that choice, Justy? Um, I tell you what it was. Uh, someone, um, oh, it was. Uh, I think Phoenix um, put up. Uh, they're doing their from their vault thing now. Yeah. And I put up a video of like one of the full shows, and I said, "Look, oh, I'm going to have to watch my own match." So I I watched um, myself, and I just I looked at it and I said, "Fucking hell, I am so good at selling for <laughs> other people." And then I thought, like, "Oh, that's that's a great topic." I was thinking of I was looking for a great topic. Mm. Um, uh, so I did like because uh, the the match was myself and Debbie versus Raven Creed and Steve Savage, and like I made Steve Savage look good. So I am fucking class. Like I just I'm so good. Like um, <laughs> that's, that's actually the, why all of our matches are actually have Justy in them. Um, and yeah, it's like it's, yeah, <laughs> like every that's my choice. Anyways, uh, we yeah. we have Justy's WCW run. That ECW was a, yeah. run. Uh, me versus The Rock for the Intercontinental Championship yep. in 1998. Classic. Yeah, uh, yeah, that, that was a good one. Feud with uh, Taz and yeah, my my phone in the ring run would have been done because, like, oh man, I sold. Could have could have sold sand to the Eskimos. That's the. Uh... <laughs> so there you go. What more reason do you need? But look, without further ado, we have some great choices tonight. Um, some surprise ones and some not so surprising ones, and uh. We'll see. We'll see who comes out the winner. And without further ado, we're going to start off. And I think Jonathan, you said that we're going to start with my pick. Is that right? We are. We are indeed. Because, like I said, we have a few. The I suppose the when you did ask the question, who the first like names would pop into my mind. In the, if we're doing kind of family fortune style, this one is on the surface a bit of a surprise. But Dennis, I think you are going to try and uh, compel us into an argument here about. Yeah. So, for bestseller, you probably. Foxy and Jonathan probably weren't so surprised I went with this because I always mention it whenever he's featured on it that I don't think he gets enough credit for his selling ability, and that's Brock Lesnar. I'm, um, I, I was pleasantly surprised by this. I will I will point out <laughs> that when this came up, um, the the two guys fighting, I was like, oh, he's he's gone for Lesnar, like, and because it's yeah, yeah. it's something that I'll, I'm I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be honest here. I wouldn't say it to his face, but Lesnar, I I don't like not that I don't. I didn't for a long time like his movement in the ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it like his amateur kind of shines through a little bit and it's not as clockwork as as a uh, as pro wrestling. Uh, yeah, it like, might might not be as smooth kind yeah, of moving around. But for Lesnar it doesn't need to be. Mm. But he does overcompensate with cells to make other guys look good because mm. he's such a big imposing dude. Yeah. So he yeah. needs to be a good seller. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's that's part of my reason behind it. Now, the reason I went with this particular match was because, number one, I, I, I wanted to go with kind of current run Brock as opposed to classic Brock, which we've watched a lot. Um, and 
I don't think this match gets enough love because I rem- the build to it. I love the build to it, and I think in this match, Lesnar he he goes so out of his way to make Joe look like like a proper formidable threat, and like you really believe that Joe could actually fucking beat him, um, and like whatever happened with Joe down the line around like that, they didn't capitalize on it. That's another discussion, but. I think this match is a great example of um, what Brock can do when he's kind of invested in the program, if you know what I mean. Yeah. And like, if you look in this one, the one thing that stands out to me, the sell for the clutch, for, for Joe's clutch, I, I just love. Because he, he, he goes on it for about, uh, I'd say, he, he goes for it about three times, maybe four. Um, and each time, like, Brock is just in a fucking panic, like, panic. trying to get out of it. Yeah, it's because exactly. he... You're, he's selling the, the the fact that this is this is a go to sleep move. Like. Yeah. yeah, this is it. He's been caught in it before in the attacks, and it put him out. So he knows if he gets caught in it properly, he's fucked. So I, I think it's. You, a- I, I tell you, like the best bit of selling Brock, and like it's it's funny when you show um, recent wrestling. Like I, like I only watch wrestling in GIF form these days, but <laughs> um, it's it's funny because I have actually I did invest into this stuff because. That was a like for me. That was something that was legit. Was Lesnar versus uh, Samoa Joe, and the best selling that Lesnar done uh, for this match was in the promos before that. Yes. Like, mm. like he he sold Samoa Joe as a threat to Brock Lesnar, and that that's one of the most important things going into this match. Lesnar already was selling the point that Samoa Joe was not only a threat to him, but that he was concerned. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. He, you don't see Brock Lesnar concerned about someone a lot. Yeah. And then like all, like all he has to do now is, is get to the match and do it. Cause he's already sold Samoa Joe yeah. as a threat. hundred like, yeah. percent. I mean like that, that that's half the battle. And uh, for an event, I don't think, I remember the start of this many people had much hopes for the match going into it. But by the time the build was done, I know I was psyched to see it myself. Um, yeah. So, without further ado, if everybody's ready, I'll count it down. And on three, two, one, play. I can, I can only apologize about my voice, the noise of my. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea how to use technology, so. <laughs> That's okay. No, you're fine. If this is way okay. too loud, let me know. No, we, we're, we're not hearing nothing. Yeah, at least I don't think so. Jonathan can tell where he's doing all the tech stuff. I have the ear for it. I, like with this pick, like I, I'm I'm not surprised this has come up because I mean, like you said, with with the build, the build alone is what sold people on this match. Mm. I mean, it it wouldn't have mattered uh, what the outcome was. They've already got people before the yeah. match has even started. And I think this this was a great glimpse into how good uh, Joe could be put yeah. in a big match situation. I mean, yeah. his promos, like, don't forget, like, even though, like, Lesnar is selling for him, you also have to commend Joe for how good his promos were. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's quite funny that we're watching this now since uh, since Joe's been released. And uh, it was only we came up with a conversation on, on last week's episode with Jamie Coleman about how like there was a certain legitimacy to Samoa Joe like he had that kind of aura of like it doesn't matter how 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 he looked he looked like he could punch a train unconscious and that's what the fucking that's what kind of mattered in a sense and when you do look at the way like he his WWE run ended up now I'm sure he made a arse lot of money and that's what matters in the end but um but he just like this was such a great opportunity to just put someone on the on the part of, of Brock Lesnar um, and in, in a way, I, I feel it's kind of a shame that he didn't follow through with it for whatever reason, because Joe has everything to be that type of type of monster. And I, I think he was really derailed by by a few badly timed injuries. Yeah, um, yeah, that's true as well. Yeah, and just it kind of it suffered momentum and stuff like that with him. It's a shame because I was I was saying that on 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 our last episode with with Jamie. Um, I don't really care what a wrestler looks like to to a degree like yeah. I, I, what I'm talking about is body shape here 
Chris I is, do. I, <laughs> very important. I was going to say, Joe, to me, is fucking terrifying. Like, I would yeah. not fuck with Samoa Joe. Um, and it doesn't matter that he's not ripped like fucking Finn or anything like that. I just wouldn't fuck with him. He looks like he'd take your head off. Yeah, he's, he's, he looks like... He, this is what I always say about when, when people talk to me about, you know, not being in shape or whatever. I was like, if a lad looks like he could bait your dad, then he's... You can sell him as a wrestler. Yep. And yeah. Samoa Joe is just a slab of humanity. He is... Like he's a block of man, and you mm. know he looks legit. Yep, he's he's a person that like fits the mold of being someone who knows his size, like his body type, and knows how to utilize it. Yeah, and definitely. in a very effective way, to the sense that like he he knows he's not he's not the biggest looking or the best shape looking guy, but he can fucking go. Yeah, like it's also what, it being part of his personality as well. Like yeah. the fact that he can drop his shoulder a little bit and he will kind of like talk shit because he knows he can he can take the he can take the licks like you know, and that's mm. that's an even bigger part of that kind of that, of that kind of character. Because like I said, it's it's the same with his, in, with his many years in TNA. Like, oh, there we go. Look, look at this. That. There you go. Just sound oh, it. Brilliant. Like the whole just whole keep time. Keep an eye like, on Brock, Brock this looking. whole time. He just he acts like he's so rocked by everything he does. Mm. But like the whole time, like he's he doesn't even want to actually like raise the belt because he knows like uh, he's gonna pounce oh. on me any second. <laughs> That's this is what this is a fucking hot start, like Jesus. Yeah, man. look look how dangerous they've made Joe already. Though. Yeah, yeah. This is it all within the minute, the first minute of the match. Brilliant. Mm. Is it even started? Like no, it no, yeah. hasn't Ma- started. Match has, the match hasn't begun. Official bell didn't ring. That's what I'm saying, yeah. No. Sound like it. And even Heyman now as well. Like Heyman's a, a dark horse in this match as well. Because Heyman he, and Joe's promo was... before this, where mm. Joe went up and started whispering like I'm I'm going to I'm, I, I'm gonna make you go to sleep now. Yeah. And it's not like oh, <laughs> and it's gonna hurt and all that. He was like whispering to him, it was fucking like, like it, it goes without saying it's basically like a package deal. If you get Brock, you get Heyman and the two of them together they complement each other so well yeah because while it was always like whatever Brock lacked Paul made up for it but they're both so good at selling things and conveying like certain things little subtleties that you wouldn't pick up on so straight away yeah well it's Lesnar's concern or uh, sorry Heyman's concern for Lesnar yeah, you yeah. can always see, and it, like it's there's no kind of uh, there's no subtlety to his facial expressions there. Like when yeah. look, look at this, even getting into the ring, how slow it is. Mm. Just like he's fucked. Yeah, but yeah, to Justy's point, I mean, Heyman is just and Foxy as well. Like Heyman adds to everything with it. Just, mm. just. He's not taking away the attention, but he's just adding to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We talked about that with the when we watched Lesnar v. Taker yeah. when the streak ended. Like Paul didn't get involved, but he's on the outside constantly conveying like worry or yeah. he's, he's, an added character. he's like a secondary character in the whole thing. Yeah, much like that with a kind of supporting role in a way, much like the, as well as a movie or TV show. You kind of appreciate them more because. They don't necessarily get the limelight, but they make use of whatever scenes they have. And with Heyman, it's just being in the background, showing that energy, you know. Like, he, he's kind of, he's the punctuation on Lesnar's performance. So, like, yes. like as as good as, like, look at this. But uh, as good as Lesnar is at, at, at selling, this is what obviously what we're supposed to be talking about here is, is Lesnar selling. But Heyman is, like, when... If 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 Lesnar was a word, Heyman is the exclamation point behind it. You know what yes. I mean? Like everything that uh, Lesnar does, there's a, there's a, a little bit of hype brought to it because Heyman is fucking putting everything over. Look at this. Touch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the ropes. 
Uh, Samoa Joe's arms are like like constrictors yeah, and, around and the neck of the Universal Champion. And look at Brock. 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 All he needs to do is just grab him oh. off, but he don't. Just yeah. fought his way out. That's of desperation moves Lesnar yeah. is yeah. using as well. Yeah. Mm. Not something you see him do often, like yeah. desperation moves. But like, oh, look at that, uh, like the German. I also love when you have two, two guys who aren't afraid to kind of take digs at each other as well in the ring. Like they're not afraid to get a little bit stiff and like, you know, work a little bit snug and all that. And yeah. it gives a it a bit more of a fight feel. You know, yeah, that's exactly what this match is. It felt like a much of a lot of Lesnar like matches around this time that quick and sharp, but they feel like a fight. The very kind of MMA type of energy to it, where you feel like oh, it could happen at any point. The win, the, the you could win or lose at any point. Um, as far, as much as you can be with a with like a oh, it's, it's seven minutes, lad. Slow down a bit. <laughs> There's no full confidence now that he's got yeah. a couple of offensive moves in. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's brilliant. Some of that. Dick Kick City. He got mm -hmm. all of that one. Yep. <laughs> right in different times. Like Which, like, you didn't see often, like, people getting the upper hand like that on Brock. Like, actually using the dirty tactics against him. That's the thing, because it's important to know, like, Joe's not a baby face here. Like, he's working. No. On the heel in this like and so is Lesnar so it's just a very strange thing it's like oh no let's just have these two duke it out together we're gonna cheer Joe anyway so fuck he might as well, might as well be facing this yeah I don't know Dave, if you saw the entrance they they were kind of more on Brock's side mm. than they were on Joe see because they yeah because at the time they were still pushing Reigns to go after Brock so that's why so that's why Brock briefly got like his little baby face tint. <laughs> because <laughs> Cause he wasn't as hated as right. <laughs> yeah. Clutch again, look, trying to fight it off. Mm. Grasp the hands. Such good work. Even the Great. facial, just the grimace. Great teaser. Yeah. Now Joe may have it. Brock Lesnar now. The breathing as well. There you go. It's starting to register. Mm. And it's perfect as well because he knows what he's doing. Like it's right to the hard camera. He knows what he's doing. He's giving them the proper facial that they yeah. they need. You know. Well, like I, I don't want I don't want to rain on anyone's parade on that one. But if you're in the WWE, <laughs> you know where the hard cam is. That's that's fair point. Fair point. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the L, I'll take the fucking L on that one. All right. <laughs> you have one of the wacky inflatable tube men just around the camera yeah. like that, just sleeping. Like, yeah. Or be be like Drew McIntyre. It's like, what's the hard cam? <laughs> I could get over here in that story. His fourth match in, and he's being told to like sell to the hard cam. What's the hard cam? Oh, hard cam. It's like the wrestling equivalent of where's the anything. Oh. oh, there's a unique reversal. Love that. Drop down, crunk back. Very, like, amateur. Like, his amateur like background is coming into play as well yeah. with his speed. Yeah. Like, you could imagine seeing that, like, a cruiserweight do that at start of a match to go in for a waist lock. But, like, you're not going to imagine Brock Lesnar doing it. No. Again, it's like what I'm saying. It's a desperation kind of a thing. It's not, he didn't do it because he was clever. He done it because like he just wanted to be crawling on all fours. He's Brock Lesnar. He had to do it because Joe's legitimate. And then clutch again. Three. Look at like the crowd are up for it as well. Still Joe's not in a good position to fall to his back. Lesnar standing straight up, which Oh legs. Oh, the main ref. Just a little thing, like just a great point the legs, mm. and that just like instantly everyone's like, "Ooh!" Brock fading, and you can hear just Heyman in the background just screaming. I love that too. Mm. Brock's complexion makes the likes of sleepers and stuff because he goes, he goes red, so red, so red. Like, so. Brock is laboring, guys. He's about a couple of seconds. There's from definitely some ball in the slow blood in him somewhere. Like, there's no way he's going to be With a big red fog face on him like that. Yup. Look at Lesnar. 
No, no, the Lesnar's uh, He is a farm boy anyway, originally. Yeah. And there we go. As far as I know, that's it. Oh. oh. Yeah, just like that. But how much, like, the whole match he put over Joe yeah. Yeah. being the aggressor and being a threat to Lesnar. But then you always go back to Lesnar is just one F5 away from winning. And yeah, even now, exactly. post match, he's there. He's there, gripping his throat. He's like, yeah. "Fuck!" He's he's gasping for air. He's still, he's still saying he's not up and about fucking celebrating. He's like, mm -hmm. "Fuck it!" And as Justy said, it's like it's not like he dominated. It's like he got, got away with it. One devastating move in, and that's what he needed to get the three. It's not like it wasn't a challenge for him. Mm -hmm. One of the rare instances where he fought from under yeah. rather yeah. than from on top. Take a look back. It's, that's very unusual for Brock Lesnar. It is, but it was the right thing, oh, yeah. I think, with, with a guy like Joe. Yes, it works so well. Mm. Yeah. But the testament to how good of a seller Brock is yeah. by doing that. So, um, that's that's our first match in the bag. Pretty pretty quick, pretty, uh, pretty short one, but that's my choice. So we'll start the scoring. I think Jonathan, uh, if you if you'll start us off with your with your to, score, I'd love to, Dennis. Thank you very much. Well, well do it then, you fuck. Stop talking. Thank you. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, again, you, you've made a very shrewd choice with this because uh, again, we've been kind of waxing lyrical about when Lesnar really is into a match and into a feud, he puts like complete commitment into it. And again, he does he does get a very rough time for the part time or bullshit and stuff like that. You can't really blame a guy on how he's booked. You know, if something is working, it's working, and you don't you don't think they're broken in that sense. Um, so in that regard, like I would say, yeah, no, this is a this is as pretty like good as you can get uh, selling wise, especially if you wanted to sell someone as a threat. It is a bit of a shame they didn't really do much with that going on because it would have been nice to have a rematch. Of this I don't know if they did they have a rematch after this. I don't think they did. Um, um, no, it was kind of a one and done, I think. It was one and done, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. See, that's where yeah. that, that's the bit of the shame because, like, you would have loved to see Joe have a second crack at it and then perhaps may have a challenge in property for the title. And um, that's not a, a point down in the favor, by the way. It's just like that's just a bit of hindsight playing up. So, overall, like, I'd probably rank this an 8.5 because for the type of match it is, for the type of contender you have, like, Brock Lesnar, like, basically, like, wrestled a match he doesn't normally wrestle, which is like he's the. He, he's the the underdog in a very weird way. So he, he played that very well. So I'd say 8.5. Nice, nice. Um, so, Foxy, yeah. what to you next for yours? So for that, like, like as as we talk about, like, Lesnar being invested in a feud, he just, like, he, he does, he gives a lot. And this is, this is a testament to it. Because from as soon as he got in the ring, he's selling for Joe. Like, even with just little glances and like for all the moves that Joe, Joe was the aggressor in this and just took one F5 to put him away. But that was like after all, like going through a table and then being in the clutch for three, three attempts at least. So great sound from Lesnar. Good match. It is a shame that Joe didn't get his chance, but that's not up to us to decide. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I'll give it an eight. Nice, and uh, the, the the score that really matters, Justy. You're so <laughs> What do you think? <laughs> like you're, you're saying that my one matters, but then like we're, for me, I've not based this on. This is my first. <laughs> like, you, you guys do this all the time, where you're like, let's give a match a score. <laughs> like, uh, what the fuck? This is first. I've I've come on here. <laughs> this is my first match I'm seeing. I could. I could be like, what my what my base? This could be how much is that like, match so, that talk to you, Foxy? Like how? Are, I'd, are I'd say I I'd say if you were based on out of four splashes of aftershave. I don't. <laughs> I don't. If you were to base it on that, I'd say, in in your opinion, in, in the theme of best sellers in the biz, how good of an example was that match of Brock Lesnar's ability to sell? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll stick with the, the guys here because I actually like that. That's a really good choice. Um, if, if I'm honest, I, I wouldn't have probably thought about Lesnar in the like in my top like as I was deliberating who I was going to use. 
Mm. I, I wouldn't have put I wouldn't have thought of Lesnar, but that was a dark horse uh, choice there because that's like and the match as well that you chose um is just like it, why do we sell? It's to put the other guy over and without like he, he didn't he didn't job the match, but mm. he made um Joe look so good, look like such a threat put over his uh finishing move um right out from the gate he was on the back foot to joe so to make in the basis of making your opponent look good that's a that's a absolutely fantastic match you chose a fantastic pairing of wrestlers to choose and uh yeah I'll, I'll, look i'll i'll give that a good strong yeah eight and a half yeah let's go 8.5 on that one like nice, nice. Yeah, good start. Then. So there you go. Um, so that's my choice. <clears throat> Sorry, what, what what was the score there, John? Twenty five out of thirty. Nice got strong it. start, then. Nice ah, strong start. Mm. Not too shabby. Um, up next, who have we got? So it is my choice, and for this one, I I decided to go back a good while, good back, good bit, and it would be remiss, like if we're talking about gray sellers, uh, I it'd be almost criminal to not mention Rick Rude in this. <laughs> Both these guys were on my, um, were on my short list. Well. Short list. I used to pick. So yeah, this is a good one. This is a good one. Yeah. Did you pick this specifically because you wanted to see that inverted atomic drop cell? <laughs> is that what you're looking for? <laughs> Why? 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 No. A little bit. A little bit. But no, no, like I, I, I do remember going back and watching like the build up to the feud, like in the feud. And then obviously like showing the tights, mm-hmm. uh, like constantly, like even though like Jake was still getting a couple of beatings on Rick Road, like it wasn't till the match that he beat the piss out of him. And from start to finish, like Rood is selling like the mm-hmm. whole way in the, the only way that he can, which is fucking amazing and hilarious at the same time. Yeah. But my pick is Jake Roberts versus Rick Rude from Saturday Night's Main Event all the way back in 1988. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, so does everybody have uh, the link up? Yep. Yep. All right. So well, then, Foxy, if you'd like to do the honors. Three, two, one, ding. Yeah, I can count. Sometimes it's, it's, it's a rare occurrence. Sometimes, yeah. I was expecting to kick out there at two, but <laughs> <laughs> then I remembered it was me. <laughs> no, it otherwise... It now. Yeah. The boxy. One, two, now. Ah, <laughs> uh, Jesse Ventura with hair. <laughs> it was already selling. That was a pitiful slap. He was in some shape, wasn't he? Yeah. Fucking specimen was. Like, <laughs> just clocks he. Oh. <laughs> Might as well when he's there, like, fuck it. Oh, yeah, the tights. Yeah. Oh. With his wife's face on him. Fucking <laughs> mind game. This is brilliant. Yeah. Like the pr- like you have like the psychology and the promo skills of Jake Roberts against like the promo skills like the charisma of Rick Rude and the ability that he has. It's just it's a natural pair. Like, like I mean, it's a shame like they didn't have a bit more in the feud. Because like they definitely could have had like a series of matches. Oh, like, look how at often that. do you how often do you see Jake coming in at that speed into a match? Shit. God damn it, I'm missing all the best bits because of that play. <laughs> look him, like selling like constantly. And go. <laughs> Jesus Whoa. Christ! Christ. <laughs> I have never seen Just, that man so fast. Ah. Uh, he didn't crazy. fucking launched over the top rope. He fucking yeeted. Bobby the yeet Heenan. <laughs> oh, can we disconnect you from the call? <laughs> no, I'm editing. Oh, he's recording. 
I like By the way, Foxy, on the on the topic of inverted from the drops, that is like something you have to add to the list of things you need to do when we come back. Like you but, have to uh, do the, the Rick Rude like sell. Just like someone hit, gives you an atomic drop and you just give it the high high pitched shriek <laughs> that the dogs can hear. <laughs> and, like, just be stood in like stone, like just like completely frozen. It's like so, so Justy, this is one thing we've been doing um, while doing this show throughout the whole pandemic. Basically, Foxy is filling up a notepad with all the spots he has to do when he goes back right. uh, wrestling. Yeah, right, 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 right. So stuff like, um, is the did you ever see that ref cell where he hits the three ropes on the way yes, down? Yeah, 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 yeah. That one. I try, I, I tried it stiffly like, when I saw that first. Went straight into the fight factory <laughs> to try and get that, but like, couldn't do. Look at this cell. Look. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> It's just ham. It's pure ham. But it's brilliant. But the whole audience is just gobbling it down. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it just shows you that, like, simple things like that, like, like <laughs> you don't have to go, like, 90 miles an hour, but, like, simple things like a wrist lock, you can work that for... for I actually really like the little spot there where he just, he went outside and he dragged, dragged him back, back in over the top. I, I, I really like that. I feel like... Uh, just incredible and beyond the mat. I'm watching this and I'm like, I'm stealing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, making his making his finisher look legit. Yep. Yeah. Who do we know much of selling between Rick Rude and Charlie Sterling? Oh, is, how dare you? The, the, Sterling, <laughs> has, Sterling has his little list as well of. Uh, of stuff he wants to be selling as well and now again people just send charlie gifts of just rick rude and you know <laughs> I've, sent, I've sent them a few as well yeah <laughs> just just the best guys she did have a secret patreon he just like he just gets he just sells like moves for people for money <laughs> uh, ma- imagine just imagine the scenario is like mid-match like he just hears someone in the crowds like I'll pay you money to sell this. Show me the money. Money. Okay. Hit it. Boom. Sell. Big back, big back. <laughs> 20 quid for yeah. an atomic drop. Yeah. That's it. Re- resume match now. You're such a whore, Foxy. <laughs> that should be charity. That should be his only fans. Absolutely. Like, your, man would, your man would fucking break the, break the budget completely. Nah, Sterling, like, he's top notch. Like, he's selling. Like, so. I also know just for me saying the word whore, I know you're now thinking of Stu Hart. Yes. <laughs> Some Stu- kind of whore. That's a good Stu Hart. <laughs> now I'm just thinking about that video now. Oh. I have a very good Stu Hart impression right here. There he is there. Look, he's a nice oh, Stu Hart. Jesus. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> there he is there, right there. Look at that. Look at those dead soulless eyes. <laughs> There we go. Look at Rude. That's what we came for. All the, the crowd work from Rude in general, all of his, was just so on point. Like, isn't it? I know. It, it's it's. I know we've no crowd in, in professional wrestling these days, like, but great sound. Just a closing sound. But um, what the WWE don't they like? They do everything for cameras now. Yeah. So like you don't get that big explosive. Look at him! What? Oh. <laughs> I want to talk, but also I just want to enjoy this. Yeah. But um, <laughs> oh, that's the, we were all it always in the same boat, man. <laughs> yeah. wait until there's Back a in those days, they, they they wrestle for the audience, and the cameras catch that experience. Yes. Mm. So not like it should always be fair. Like it's the fact that that has been lost over the years because of yeah. stuff like that. You know yeah. something, that's actually a really good point that I, I, I haven't really thought of. Like, Do you think some of like the likes of, of, of Roots selling, etc., like almost because it's it's kind of ham it up or whatever, but, you know, you kind of have to do that. Like from, like, say if you're in theater or something, you have to act bigger than if you were on TV yeah, yeah. so that the audience can see it, etc. Do you think that one maybe was more of it, that they were caring to the crowds more than they were to the camera? Oh, 100%. Like, oh, yeah. Like... Rude's not going to do those big extravagant sells if it's to cricket. Stuff. He's yeah. doing them because he knows they're getting those 
massive reactions from those hot hot crowds so like mm. that's why even nowadays like like Ziggler's a great seller mm. but he's not he doesn't ham it up half as much as like Rude does yeah. because mm. there's no like the audience isn't going crazy for it because he's wrestling for TV you know what I mean yeah but this is what I'm saying Rude is wrestling for the crowd there and the TV just happened to be catching it which is unfortunately what's lost at the moment like it, it just Oof. like that's the way it should be it should be played to the crowd and then real things happen and then you get a genuine experience yeah, yeah. yeah. like and it comes across on the camera like no matter what like if it's genuine it'll come across like, rather than oh yeah I'm after doing a cool move but now I have to turn to the hard cam so the people yeah, can yeah. see like, so the camera can see it mm-hmm. So, so it's one of my pet peeves for like TV the fact that like any of the promos are all done to the hard cam now I understand why it's why it's done but there's, there's even when they have setups like even Jericho has the the highlight reel there's half the crowd can't see it because it's blocked <laughs> yeah <laughs> like it's just you're kind of like alienating that like part of the crowd mm. <clears throat> So even the way they, the, way they, they, they the crowd that. eruption when he just gives the yeah. oh nice straight there on. you go beautiful twice making his his finisher look legit it's what we were talking about uh, the other day rule of three yep that'd be the thing now then like for you because now that I've shown like pointed it out you will actually notice it when you go back and watch certain matches. Yeah. Oh, I've 100% got a rule of up. my own. Take three bumps, then roll me up. <laughs> <laughs> or you growl like a dog, one or the other, yeah. and just try to pop everyone. Oh, I miss those shows. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I want to go back to NLW. Like, I just want to have fun. Yeah. It's the most fun I've had at shows. Uh, mm. NLW is the, the perfect um, kind of it because it's perfect to wrestle as a wrestler because yeah. you're not even wrestling for the audience there. You're wrestling for the guys that are just beside you behind the curtain and you're taking the absolute... Oh, oh, oh beautiful. Oh. Even the crowd little... just jumped like they're proper... On... Again, rule of three. Third time, he got him. Yeah, that's it. DQ. Like, even the even the little thing like it, it like Rick is going for the the rule awakening, and Jake mm-hmm. just like boom grabs like bites the hand. Yeah, like little thing like that, but like everyone's eating it up completely. Look at Heenan selling. I'm gonna yeah. like that's should have had him on the list. The booze. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, the stories that Jake like, would tell about uh, working Andre. He's like pulling this hair out. He's like, yeah. <laughs> and he said he was lucky because Andre liked him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stories about um, Barry Windham working with Andre mm-hmm. and how uh, <laughs> Andre didn't really like him because, you know. Or uh, uh, Big John Stud was actually probably one of the worst ones because yeah. he was big and he saw him getting over the ropes. Like, over the, he walked got into the ring over the top rope. So Andre really didn't like that. So he just worked him over every chance he got. And uh, yeah. <laughs> look at John that. John Stud had no choice but just to get beaten up every night. And he wasn't <laughs> used to it because he was such a big guy himself. Mm. Look at that. Like, he's not even moving, it's literally just subtlety now. Little movements, but the crowd are all on it. Well, now we're not counting neither of these lads, you chancer. No, 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 but I'm just I'm pointing out like how, how good yeah. is this selling? Oh, no, like, like I mean, this is an iconic moment. Yeah, I mean, look at look at that. No one, no one makes Andre fucking cower back in fear. No, mm. Jake did it with a snake. Oh, 
I'd imagine there wasn't a lot of animal welfare put into uh, <laughs> no. Joe's back. That's a stun snake, Justin. You know. It. Even Jake told stories about that. I think he was saying like he didn't. He didn't fucking know. He just kind of dumped the snake wherever. No, was it like? Jesus, that poor snake. <laughs> yeah. Right. He's not selling there. That's legit. Those, those yeah, things are, are trained to bump anyway, so it's fine. <laughs> Where does his yeah. back begin? Like, how does he know he's doing a back bump or a front bump? Like, you know? Oh no, that, that's the thing they do. They do both of them fantastically well. Like, you know, there's no, <laughs> a, you know, how, like people a, are sensitive to doing front bump. Snake's not a problem. Long, you can see him tucking his chin there. He's fine. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he won the rub superbly well, by the way. Oh man. <laughs> Jesus. All Christ. right. <laughs> Graphic. Crotch shot. Symbolism here on Watch Graphs with me. <laughs> uh, so that was Foxy's choice and and a great choice, I must say. So, um, Justy, do you want to take the lead on this one? Um, yeah, sure. Um, right. Well, like you can't go wrong with Rude. Um, it's a, a like it's a quick again. It's a quick match. It's uh, so like you, I suppose it doesn't need to be. A long match to sell your opponent as a threat. Mm. But, uh, again, before this match, um, the the feud was like the match was already sold. People were at fever pitch waiting for this match to happen. They wanted to see Rick Rude get his comeuppance. Um, it's because he's such a good heel. Like, mm, um, but then in there, Rude sold like an absolute champ. Um, absolutely. Like as as he as he always does, but like for. Uh, the likes of Robert uh, for someone who isn't a big imposing guy mm. um, Rude made everything that like he 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 shone a light on Jake's um, attributes like the mm. fact that uh, Jake is smarter than him so like he does like Rude doesn't mind looking the fool as long as he's putting the other guy's uh, smartness over, um, yeah. when he's when he's in charge, he's you know he's loving himself. He's he's cocky, but then when he's on the back foot again, he's he's afraid. He's always putting Roberts over as a threat. But it's the selling of the individual moves for me that will sell this. Um, it's just he's so fantastic and for the time he it was perfect uh though like as you were saying for that hot live audience he was um a pantomime uh, wrestler um Mm. which we all know i'm gonna love um so like he's he's those big movements those big cells and i love him i'm gonna give i'm gonna give rude I'm gonna give him a big eight and a half here, big a big nice. solid eight and a half, um, because he's fantastic. There's probably there's probably examples out there of Rude selling bigger, but this every sell in this match was a necessary sell, and it was yeah. so good. Um, yeah, oh, do you know what? Eight and three quarters. No, <laughs> no problem. Yeah, so. Um, I, I'd find it hard to disagree with what Justy says there. Um, I mean, Rick Rude, he's a legend, and not just in the ring. I mean, for his selling, not just for his technical ability as well. Um, the story they told, which y'all know I'm I'm huge on, was fantastic. Um, again, not just the build up, but the story they told in the ring. Roberts was on him from the fucking get go. He was fucking yeah. more aggressive than we'd probably see. Usually, you know, Jake Roberts is this methodical. You know, he'd slink around the ring, pick his shots and all that stuff. But this was more aggressive, more everything. And I loved the story. Um, <clears throat> the selling in it, yeah, Rude sold like a champ for him. He sold, like he was doing damage. He was terrified of the DDT. And when it eventually hit, it hit hard and, and it was out of nowhere. Um, there's, there's, I mean, I, I can't, I'd find it hard to, to fault much in it. Um, you know... Again, if you looked at it kind of through today's goggles, you might think it was like cheesy or hammy or whatever. But I mean, as Justy etc. addressed in 
while we were watching it, it's kind of the way it was. They were there for the audience as opposed to the yeah, camera. Yeah. But that's you it, know, like, um, that's the way it's going back then. Yeah, so I think I'm I'm gonna agree and yeah, I'm gonna go high. I'm I'm gonna go nine, nine. Mm. um for that one. I just I, I can't I I can't fault it that much. Um yeah, I just if anything, I, I'd only I, I wish it went on a touch longer, but that's that's it. That's minor nitpick. That's it. Yeah, well, like what, that's what, what well. uh complain to have. Oh, I wish there was more of it, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. you know, Absolutely. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is it, like yeah. yeah let's switch on the light. This just natural sunlight is going to uh, do yeah. me dirty. No problem, um, Jonathan. <laughs> it is now yeah. uh, your your turn to score. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, again, very much uh, on a similar uh, vein. I'm going to go for an eight point five on the match. And um, what I would say is that, like, uh, I totally agree that Rick Rude is one of the best, if not one of, if not the best, like top three when it comes to selling. Like the man is like a born pantomime villain and it's for exact this this sort of stuff. Like um what I would say about the match is that it just needed a little bit more from like he like he sold fantastically and then Rick like Rude came back, then Jake Snake came back. I think the interference kind of like took a bit a little bit away from the Rude Snake dynamic, but I'm sure there was a match down the line where they kind of like properly had a, a good brawl out of it. Um, I am indeed docking a point because there wasn't any atomic atomic drop. Which is a bit of a shame, but uh, looks like we're them all. So, and um, so yeah, I'm going. 8, I'm going eight point five on that one. Eight point five. Nice. Still a, it's still a solid shout, and it still could easily win tonight. So we'll see. Very very good. And so uh, we are on to our third one then. Yes. Um, so is this your one, John? I do believe this is your one.